Welcome back to Auto Technic, and well, welcome back to the Jet Boat Project. Now in today's video, it's really a continuation or part two of the last video that we covered on this 79 Centurion. And where we left off, we had just finished cutting and fitting the bulkheads for the boat. I went from just one conventional bulkhead to two separate ones and spaced them out a little differently. And in that previous video, I also did a little bit of woodwork for some lateral supports in the engine box. Well. Today, I finally get to finish that all up. We're gonna go over getting both of the bulkheads installed and tabbed in. On top of that, we're gonna cover the lateral supports, the engine box, the battery mount, place diverter mount, and I even finish up the mounts that I made for the fuel tanks that go on the back of the transom. All the work we did this round, it wasn't smooth sailing. You'll see here later in the video that I did end up encountering a problem with the height of one of the stringers and my seat mounts. So definitely stay tuned so you can see the problem I had, the workaround that I came up with and the final product that we have here. So now let's jump back to a couple weeks ago when I was doing the final prep and working on getting these bulkheads installed. Now, before I get to grinding and prepping the fiberglass of the boat, I'm gonna go over the bulkheads and the edges with some resin to go ahead and seal them up as I've done with all the other parts of the wood. I figure I can go ahead and let this cure up while I'm inside the boat and grinding and prepping. That way, once I'm done with the prep, it's all ready to go and be installed. Wow, okay. Now these bulkheads that I made for the boat, I chose to make them out of half inch plywood, which this happens to be the other half of the plywood that I used when I cut and made the floor. Now, if you recall back when this boat originally, before I took it apart, the stringers were placed at 24 inches apart, which that's really convenient when you go to make the floor because the floor is longer than eight feet. So you could have taken a normal piece of plywood ripped it down the center at 24 inches apart, and then you could use one piece of plywood to make the floor. Now, if you remember, I removed my stringers to 26 inches apart, which that is gonna necessitate that I used two pieces of plywood in order to make my floor. So I couldn't rip one piece of plywood down the center, I was gonna have to buy two sheets. Now, I had planned this out before I even moved the stringers to make sure this would all work in the end like I hoped, and is what I figured is I could go ahead and drop down to the half inch plywood again because of the weight versus strength but by doing so i could buy two sheets of plywood which i was going to need anyways and i could rip it at 26 inches on one side the other side's 22 inches the 26 inch side was again those two pieces are the floor i cut both of these bulkheads out of the remnants of that because they're no taller than 22 inches so in the end it ended up requiring the same amount of plywood by doing this versus if I were to keep my stringers at 24 inches. Now, another thing that some of you might be wondering is, am I gaining any extra weight by doing the two bulkheads versus one? And I can tell you that this front bulkhead, it's only a matter of a couple pounds. And I think by the time I put the fiberglass and resin on it, I'm only gaining five or six pounds by having it easily justifiable for the strength and stability I'm gonna get. That was all kind of the plan with the floor because I also didn't want to run three quarter inch bulkheads. I felt that that was still overkill, especially since I was going to be running two of them. I could cut it down to a half inch and it really just worked out well with all the wood. I ended up only buying two sheets of the half inch marine grade plywood and I used all of it to make my floor and both of these bulkheads. All right, that's just one coat. I'm gonna let that soak in and tack up. Then I'm gonna come back and hit it again to make sure I have good penetration and this resin really soaks in nice and well. And then once this is all curing up, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in the boat, continue with the grinding, get the hole prepped, and we're gonna get these things set in the boat today. So I went ahead and got the hull of the boat all prepped, which ended up taking more work than I thought because the deck of the boat had a layer of gel coat on the inside. And I went ahead and got all that gel coat off down to the bare glass. So that way I can ensure that my tabbing is gonna have a good bond and everything's gonna be really nice and strong. 
Just like the wood here, I went and soaked the area in the boat where this bulkhead's gonna go with some of the fiberglass resin, so that way it soaks in its tacky. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just take this fiber filler, put it around the edges of this bulkhead and go ahead and try to insert it into the boat. I'm pretty sure once I go to place this bulkhead in, I'm gonna disrupt quite a bit of this fiber filler around the edges because it's so tight, but there's just not enough of a gap around this to squeeze it in once it's in place. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it around the outside edges of this, carefully put it in there, carefully position it, and then whatever gets knocked off or drug across the boat, I'll clean that up. And if there's any areas with voids, I'll come back and I'll inject more filler in there after the fact. So I need to go ahead and get this wiped on here. I may carry it in and install it. There's not much working room in there, so I don't think I'm gonna bring the camera in and show you on the front bulkhead. I might do that on the rear bulkhead where I have quite a bit more space. On the front one, all you're gonna see is my feet up in the bow wiggling around. So I'm gonna get this one in. Um, I'll bring you guys back with the final product on this. Then I'll come back on this rear bulkhead and do a little bit more coverage or a little bit more detail on that insulation. All right, the front bulkhead is in and truth be told, that insulation went much better than I was anticipating. I really didn't have much of that fiber filler get wiped off of it and it all pretty much stayed in place. I was able to get it in place, positioned and any excess fiber filler, I was able to work it into the corners and give myself a nice bevel. Very happy with the result. Now I purposely waited on putting the rear one in because I didn't want to have to lay any wet fiber last on the boat and I didn't want to have to worry about it while I was working the front. So the front's had about an hour or two to set up and now it's time to go ahead and dress the rear. And just like the front, I put my fiberglass resin down on the floor of the boat. I already did the fiberglass resin on this earlier and you can see that I just kind of glopped on the fiber filler around the edges. We're gonna go ahead and carefully carry this into the boat. Now to install this board and position it, that's where the blue painter's tape that I put down with those extra marks comes into play. I measured eight inches back and made those marks. So I'm gonna slide this in position. I'll put the wood back to those marks at eight inches and then I'll just level it up and call it good and it will be installed. And just like the front bulkhead, any extra fiber filler that comes out or gets wiped off, I'm gonna work back into any gaps that I have and any excess filler you can see that I have mixed up there ready to go. I'm gonna work it all the way around the perimeter and give a nice fillet or a nice radius so that way the 1708 has a nice easy transition and does not want to lift. So let's go ahead and get this installed before this fiber filler kicks off. We got both bulkheads set in place and now we just need to be patient and let that fiber filler cure up before we can work on the tabbing of them. And also I need that fiber filler to get cured and hard so I can crawl in and work on the backside of both bulkheads. I've not addressed those yet. I'm gonna call it a night tonight. I'll see you guys back here tomorrow morning and we're gonna continue on with those bulkheads. All right guys, I got a little bit ahead of myself yesterday. I jumped out here and I got the fiber filler addressed on the front side of both bulkheads. So that's still drying up. And I think I mentioned this in the last video where I started the work on the bulkheads. My plan is to go ahead and get those installed with just the fiber filler and also get all the remaining woodwork installed and in place with the fiber filler. Then I'm gonna come back and tab everything in all at once. I'm doing so because really the biggest part of this project is the cure time on tabbing it really just ends up consuming a lot of my time and making this go longer than it needs to. So if I have multiple areas that I can tab in while other things are drying or wet that are limiting my access, I'm hoping that it's gonna go ahead and speed this up and let me get through this phase of the process a little bit quicker. So therefore, I need to go ahead and finalize the rest of the woodwork, which we're gonna jump on today. So what we need to jump onto now is these rear lateral trims slash engine box that I'm gonna go ahead and get in position. Now I wanna get these in place so that way I can be sure or I can have them marked with the back seat one last time so I can get my final marks to make sure they can be positioned exactly where I want. But in addition, what I really need to do is I need to go ahead and get these placed into the boat and I need to be sure that my rear side trims that I have are not gonna interfere. 
because potentially right here on the bottom of these trims, I need to make sure there's enough space for the trim to sit here up against this angle for the fuel tanks. So I dug the trims out. We're gonna go ahead and get them screwed in the position. I'm gonna have to go ahead and place the back seat back into the boat. I'm gonna have to put the engine cover back on to position the back seat. That's gonna allow me to finalize the placement of this wood. And then it's also gonna allow me to go ahead and make a mark once I have the final placement on the hull of the boat. And like I've done with everything else, I'll make a mark a little bit further back, probably, you know, six, eight inches. So that way I know where to position them after I grind and prep the hole. It seems like I've spent more time test fitting things into this boat than actually working towards the final product. But I mean, this is the exact reason why I do this. You can see on this side, I have this trim screwed in with all three screws. I have plenty of space and I don't have to really worry about this lateral wood in relation to this trim at all. However, over here, I only get one screw in. It's hitting on this wood down here, so I need to either cut this wood shorter or lower on this edge. I'm not sure what the best plan of attack is. I need to kind of eyeball it and decide what I'm gonna do because whatever I do to that wood, I'm gonna do the other side to make them equal. So before I really consider these finalized and ready to be installed, I need to decide on my cut on the sides for the side trim and finish the water drains. And then we also need to finalize the position of them. All right, with the back seat in and with the wood in place, you can really see what I'm going for with this engine box and the supports of how everything ties in together and is a positioned in relation to one another. Now on this lateral supports, I ended up taking a three quarters inch off the outside of the wood to allow the trim to fit. And I'll show you why that's exactly how I did it here in a second. I also went ahead and got drains put in for both the lateral supports to where if any water gets on this outside edge, it'll run down all the way back to my rear drain into the center to the bilge. I did some on the center board support too in case there's any water from us when we're getting out of the lake. And also that's gonna allow me to run my throttle cable back to the engine. Now how I decided to cut those lateral supports at three quarters of an inch really came down to these existing trims. If you notice, there's probably a two inch gap from that trim to the floor of the boat. Previously, that wasn't very obvious or noticeable because the carpet ran across the floor and up the fuel tank. And so it just kind of all blended in. Well, since I'm not gonna carpet the fuel tanks back here, that's gonna change how I run the carpet up there and it's gonna leave that gap. Also, if you look, it sticks out behind the back seat, which isn't a big deal, but it could be made nicer. So I kind of figured down the road, I can go ahead and get some more wood because those are just quarter inch plywood. I can make new side pieces that follow the shape of the back seat and then also sit flush on the floor up here to get rid of that gap. I can go to the upholstery shop, get more of this vinyl. It's a pretty easy shape to go ahead and cover these side panels and make some new ones. So with that in mind, when I cut the three quarter inch back here is, I wanted these so that way they can slide all the way down and be flat onto the floor. And also it'll give me enough room to go ahead and work the fiberglass and all my resin back here. Cause if it was too tight, I wouldn't have that space. Now that I have this stuff finalized, the next thing we wanna to jump to is the lateral supports that I'm gonna put up here underneath the front seats. Now these lateral supports that I'm gonna put under the front seats are gonna be pretty much the same concept as the ones that are back under the back seat. I'm not gonna put a center board up here because I don't want it to be in the way. And I'm gonna to try to have them positioned equal distance from the rear lateral support to the front bulkhead. So if you remember, we have the transom, roughly four feet lateral supports, roughly eight feet rear bulkhead, and roughly four feet front bulkhead, and roughly four feet front of the boat. So everything will be four, spaced about four feet down to give this boat some good rigidity. Now, one thing to keep in mind when I put these lateral supports is I don't want them too far rearward under the seat because that's gonna prevent the people in the back from being able to slide their foot under that gap and have a little bit more leg room because there's not much. So I'm gonna to have to kind of get some measurements and see where the natural four foot or the halfway point is to where that wants to exactly line up. If it's too far rearward, I'm gonna to have to sneak it forward. That way they give the back passenger some space. So I need to pull this back seat, pull some measurements, get that wood cut. We'll bring you back here in a second.
Well, I encountered a new problem. I probably should have saw it coming, but really I didn't. I'm trying to decide if it's something I want to tackle or not because it's going to create more work for me. Really, my OCD is getting the best of me. Now, if you recall on the videos where I was fitting the stringers into the boat, this starboard stringer has a bow to it where it arcs up in the center. And I acknowledged that and we addressed it and worked around it as we cut it and fit it into the boat. Well, I didn't expect for it to come back and kind of create more work for me down the road, which it has. So let me grab you guys and I'll show you exactly what's going on here. So because of that bow that we had in this stringer, it's sitting roughly a half inch high up here underneath the front seats. So I noticed that when I started to kind of eyeball and set up my templates for my lateral wood supports. Now I will mention that these two supports that are in, in here right now are the actually ones from the rear. I was just kind of eyeballing it before I cut the wood. I noticed it when I had the seats in the boat because the passenger seat kind of sat up at an angle and it was a little higher than the driver's seat. And the seats actually have a bolt that goes through the gunnel here. So I'm a little bit limited on how I can position them. And so I was kind of playing with it and trying to decide if I could live with it and it was all right. So you can see that I have this two by six that's ran across the distance and I was using that with the level to kind of see how bad the stringer is. And it's half inch up and that's gonna change how these lateral supports are cut. So here's the thing, structure wise, it'll have no effect on the boat long-term. This is purely cosmetic and all it's gonna do is essentially determine how the seats sit and how they sit level across the top. It's really only for looks. So I gotta decide if I wanna fix it or just leave it. And I'm gonna do that before I cut this wood and chase it because if I decide to go ahead and chase it and fix it, which the only thing I can think of right now would be to cut some material off the top of that starboard stringer, then I'll have to refiber lass over it to get everything level. Quite a bit more work just for a cosmetic, I'm not sure. Now, today's the last day of my weekend out here in the shop. I still got some time to work. I want to sit and stew on this and think about it. So I guess I'll just continue the theme of the video and we're going to pause on this. I'll give it some thought during the week. And now I need to jump over and let's go ahead and start working on the mount for the place diverter pump and a mount for the battery. That'll give me some time to ponder this one and that'll let me stay productive on the boat today. So let's go ahead and grab those components and I'm going to show you what we're working with here at the back. Okay, so you can see that I have the exhaust tips and exhaust hoses mocked in place. Now, I previously drilled out the holes and installed the tips just so I could set the hoses on. I did that because you can see once I get those hoses on, I have the fuel tank in. Space up here for the battery gets pretty tight and I want to be sure that I don't have it too close to the tank and especially too close to the hot exhaust. So I just have those sitting in there. I got the top piece of the mount cut out of the wood, which my battery tray will just sit on. And I need to decide how I'm going to make this sit. Obviously, it'll be level, but if I'm going to have wood that goes all the way around the perimeter or just two sides, um, not fully decided. I am going to have it backed a little bit away from the transom, so that way, again, it doesn't build a dam. And everything I'm trying to do my best is allow water to drain to the center of the boat and get out. Now, over here, it's a little bit easier for the place diverter pump. Um, I think this is really going to be the best place again have it leveled and this has a plastic bracket that screws it to the transom so i could just go ahead and mount it straight on the transom but then it sits up right and i don't trust the amount of weight for this pump to that bracket so i'm going to take a piece of wood cut it to fit the bottom of the boat except the top of it will be level it's going to be spaced off the transom so again i can have it's not a dam and water can drain and then i'm going to make another piece similar to what i did with these wood pieces for the fuel tank mounts and it'll be bonded to the transom and that bracket will screw that to the transom. So that way I can have the bottom of this pump sitting on the wood so all the weight is onto the boat and that plastic retaining bracket that goes around the reservoir is only holding it in place. So that one's pretty easy. A little bit more thinking and figuring what I'm gonna do on the battery there. So I need to go ahead and get some wood cut and get these ironed out.
All right guys, as you saw last week, we made some great progress on the boat. So we're back out here today. I have a couple things I wanna catch you up on before we move forward and finish with the fiber lasting on the boat. Specifically, I wanted to show you what I did with my place diverter mount and the battery tray. Also, we're gonna talk about what I did with the stringers that were too tall. So you can see that I have my battery mount in place and I'll have to pop the battery off to show you real quick. But I essentially just ran it around the perimeter with some scrap 2x4s that I had and I have it sitting flush right here on the outside. So if I go ahead and pop this battery off, let me get that out of there. So you can see that I have a piece of half inch plywood here. The battery mount is bolted to that plywood. I'm going to come back and bed that in and fiber last it onto these two by fours. But you can see where I took these two by fours, I glued them together, rounded them, made them match the shape of my half inch ply. And I have the cover off so that way I can finish getting my fiber filler around the corners and I can get a nice good coat of fiber last in here to seal it up. Then I'm gonna go ahead and fiber last the bottom side of this to get it sealed. I'll bed it in place all the way around. So it's gonna be on the two by fours, three quarters of the way and then it'll be directly on the hull of the boat there. Now to mount the battery tray that I have, I use T-nuts on the back side, just drilled the holes, use the spade bit so they're flush mount, and you can see that I cut the bolt short too so I don't have to worry about them protruding. I'm gonna glass over the top of this and just hope and pray that I don't ever have any issues with cross-threading any of these bolts or serviceability down the road. Um, we'll see how that works out in the long term. All the hardware on that is stainless steel, including the T-nuts, so I'm not worried about corrosion. Now let's jump over and take a peek at the solution for the place diverter pump mount. So you can see, pretty much centered it in between the takes and the exhaust hose, and I built my block down here on the bottom that the fluid reservoir is resting on, and then I also have the block up here that is at the angle, so the bracket bolts too, and this is loose right now, but that slides into that bracket. So now you can see pretty clear what I did. And I left this gap back here intentionally, so that way if I get any water, again, this back of the boat hangs low in the water, so the water is gonna run all the way rearward. It has a channel to run back behind and get to the drain. I didn't wanna build any dams or block any water. Now one thing on the <clears throat> place diverter pump, when I mounted it, you can see here, bring it over to the bench that I put some 3M dual lock, which is, if you guys haven't used it, it's far superior than Velcro. And both sides match, and you can actually feel it snap in place. So I put that on there, because you can see it adds a little bit of height, and I took that into account when I mocked everything up. Once everything's done, I'm gonna put that down there on that bottom mount, and that's just gonna help keep this from wanting the bouncer jump, and kind of require a little bit less work of this rear support. Now, let's talk about these stringers. I gave it some thought. I decided now was the time to do it, bite the bullet. So I ended up going and taking just a little bit under a half an inch off the front one and on the rear seat, maybe about a quarter inch. And I used my contour SCT tool with 60 grit. And quite frankly, it made extremely quick work of it. 
I think it took probably 40 minutes to get both of those knocked down. You can see that it has a nice radius where it blends into the stringer. And I was able to get my lateral supports in and everything at the right height. I mocked the seats up again and made sure that that problem's resolved. They sit where they should. Now I did overcompensate when I ground these down, meaning I went and went deeper than I needed to. So that way when I capped them back up with two more layers of 1708, then it will be at the height I need. So that was intentional. Um, and they're not gonna look as severe where they're ground down once I go ahead and put that 1708 on. I'm actually gonna kind of help with the taper when I lay those in. So it looks worse than it is, but I'm not worried about the strength and I knew it was one of those things that if I did not fix now, it was just gonna bother me every time I got in the boat and looked at that crooked seat and I would have just beat myself up thinking that I should have actually went through and did it. So did it now, I'm here. Not ideal, but we're gonna make it work. So now that all the woodwork's in place, bulkheads are in place, I shouldn't have to add any more wood to this boat, thankfully. So now I need to go ahead and it's gonna be hot and heavy on fiberglass tabbing. So I need to get all these tabbed in all the fiberglass, structural fiberglass work finished here. And then we're gonna go ahead and continue on. All right guys, honestly, I think I've subconsciously been avoiding doing this tabbing, especially up into the bow on that front bulkhead. Very little working space. I anticipate that it's gonna, it's gonna suck. I am absolutely not looking forward to it, but I'm at a point, all the wood is in. I need to get this stuff tabbed in. I need to move on to the other aspects of the build. So I'm gonna set you guys down. I'm gonna crawl up in there. I'm gonna fight my way through it. We'll see how far we get today. This job might roll in in the next week. Either way, we're gonna get it in there, get it tabbed in. I'll bring you guys back once it's all in. It seems like every stage of this project, I almost guaranteed, I underestimate how much work and how long it's gonna take. But I finally made it through and all of the woodwork is finally finished in the boat. I still have more glass work to do, 
but at least I can finally put away all the carpentry tools, all the woodworking tools, all the sawdust. We're done with that phase. I get to move on to another phase, small milestone, one step closer to the water. Let me show you the final product that we have here. So you can see battery mount, fuel tank mounts, place diverter, everything's tabbed in and I've done nothing to address the tabbing to the floor of the boat. I'm gonna come back and address that in the next video. But you can also see that I have the engine box is all complete. All my water drains are in, everything's tabbed in. I have it all encapsulated. So on the tabbing, just like the bulkheads, same thing. I ran the eight inch wide 17, 1708 and then I just put another four inch wide section and that covered everything. Now where we had that issue on the stringer for the seat, now that everything's glassed back up, you can actually see the final product and it's really not that bad. After I ground that down and you can see that raw wood, it was looking pretty bad at the midpoint of the video when I did that. But now that it's finished and it's recapped on the top and glassed in, it's not as significant and it's not as severe as it looks. I'm not worried about any loss of strength on those and it's gonna allow my seats to fit just fine. Now, some of you are probably wondering why I didn't just raise both seats and that's because both seats actually have a bolt that is bolted through the side of the wood of the seat from the inside to the outside. And those go ahead and bolt in up here on the side of the gunnel. Well, since that interior is so new and the upholstery, I can't get that bolt changed. So that dictates the height of the seat and I didn't wanna drill new holes in the boat. So I went with the option of just lowering it back down, retaining my bolt holes. We can also see up in there the forward bulkhead and our rear bulkhead back here. Again, they're tabbed in all the way around and I use the same method, the eight inch wide and the four inch wide 1708. I am gonna go back up on there, sand everything down, get the little burrs and hairs off and get one layer of resin to cover all the wood and one final layer over the tabbing. But they're in, they're installed, everything's taken care of and I'm pretty happy with the outcome. All right, so I'm not sure which video is gonna be coming next on the jet boat series. It's either gonna be addressing all the fiber last and getting it prettied up and ready for the gel coat that we're gonna do over it or I'm gonna go over the intake because this boat did not have a shoe or a ride plate and I've had the intake machine for those items. So we need to get that intake mocked up and be sure that the shoe and ride plate sit happy with the keel and make sure that there's no further fiber last work there. Not sure which one of those two videos are coming. Those are pretty much the last two videos I think that we're gonna be dealing with fiber last and then we can move on to other aspects of this build. But either way, be sure that if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so you don't miss those videos. Be sure to hit the bell so you get those notifications. For those of you that are subscribed, I thank you very much for the support. Thanks for watching the videos. Thanks for giving me your comments. For all of you, appreciate you for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one.